Hey, it's Nee from Catfish, and I'm here with MTV News journalist and True Life Crime host Domiti Pongo, and we're about to show you an unaired clip from True Life Crime involving the case of Jaden Chavez Silver. In this scene, I talk to Isaac, who is a childhood friend of Jaden's, who played Pee Wee football with him. He tells me about a shocking connection between Jaden and his killer, Isaias Madrid. Isaias, did you know him? Yeah, I knew him. I know his family, his stepdad, his mom, and his two stepbrothers really well. As a kid, man, he was real quiet, real off to himself. Isaias, Jaden, and I played Yaffle football together when we were 11 and 12 years old. And we wrestled together those years as well. Damn. Did you ever think somebody you wrestle with could be capable of something like that? Nah, man. When you're competing with one another, all you have is respect for each other. So to think that they can do this on or an accident, it's hard to get a hand on. So wait a second. So this is crazy. So what were you thinking when you found out that Jaden and Isaias had played on the same football team? It's not as uncommon as you would think. In a lot of communities, the folks who end up in these deadly conflicts had known each other, had grew up together, maybe even lived just a block away from one another, you know? And it's crazy that two lives can take completely different directions. And then when they cross paths, it can become deadly, and that's what happened here. So when his friend told me that, I actually went to Jaden's room when we got home, because I have all of his Yaffo football pictures on the walls. And he sure as heck pointed him out on the same role as Jaden. They were 11 years old. It was crazy. Their paths had crossed, so yeah, they knew of each other, I'm sure. Um, but I mean, he was 11 years old when they played. A lot of things happened between the age of 11 and 18. It becomes apparent that it's pain on all sides. Like you got Isaias, who took your friend away. Yet, you got mad love for his family. And they're hurting because now he's in the system. And then you got Nicole, who just lost her son. It's hard to see two mothers lose their sons, man. It's hard seeing both sides of it. Was there a lot of gun violence out here at the time? You always hear about it, but it never hit home like this. Ever since this happened to Jaden, did you see an increase or a decline? I don't really think it's an increase or decrease, man, but I definitely, it got my attention more. It's definitely something I look at in a different perspective, for sure. So obviously, an issue that we're still dealing with way too much in this country is how the accessibility to guns changes the way that issues and confrontations within a community play out. Yeah, and I don't know what the answer is here, but politicians have to balance protecting Second Amendment rights and protecting people at the same time. At the time Jaden was killed, New Mexico wasn't in compliance with the National Checks Amendment, meaning they didn't have to do extensive background checks before firearms were given to folks. And that made it easier for these guns to get into different communities. And then you also have child access prevention laws, which basically means that if a child gets a hold of their parent's gun and does something illegal with it, the parent then goes to jail. Those type of laws weren't in effect in New Mexico. So you've got lax gun laws, lax background checks, and these child access prevention laws that weren't in play. And I think that's how you get this powder keg. How did this change you? Made me appreciate everything a little more. Just knowing that we're not invincible, we're not immortal. That even if you do everything right, stuff happens. And to live with that, you just gotta know you gotta live like every day is your like is your last. <laughs>